fine now? Are you feeling right now? Hello guys, channel to our welcome. Uh, hello channel. Good day folks. Um, in this lesson, we're going to talk about dilution of concentration, um, calculations as well. Um, let's talk about something that is concentrated. What is it? Now, it says here, an um, acid or a base or any substance is concentrated if it contains a large amount of an acid or a base in proportion to a volume of water. Now, um, if you look at this baker here, we have um, an acid and water. Now, we will conclude that this solution is concentrated because the solvent, which is the acid, it has a greater amount in proportion to the volume of water. So this is concentrated. We, co we, we will say this is concentrated. Remember, it, a substance is concentrated if it contains the large amount of an acid or a base um, in proportion to the volume of water. So this has a large amount in proportion to a volume of water. So we concluded that this solution is concentrated. Let's look at the diluted. An acid or a base or any substance is diluted if it contains a small amount of an acid or base in proportion to a volume of water. So if we dissolve an acid in water, but there's a greater amount of water. If you look here, there's a greater amount of water. So this means that um, this is diluted because there's a smaller portion of the, of the solute than the solvent here. Remember guys, in this diagram, doesn't imply that the water will sit on top of acid or a base or any substance. This is just a diagram to show the proportion between the two, the difference between the diluted and concentrated. Now, guys, after we knowing that, what is a diluted solution? Now, it says here, yeah, when a solution with a certain concentration is diluted with an addition of water, um, addition of water to a new concentration, the number of moles in the solutions are equal because originally you have the first solution the first solution it will contain its um it will contain its number of moles so we'll say this is the concentrated solution so in the new solution where you diluted and um, you added water there uh, but the number of moles of that will be equivalent to the original which is the concentrated this will be the diluted i hope you get that now, since the number of moles of both solutions, the concentrated and the diluted are equivalent, we can conclude and say um, from the formula that says um, C is equal to N over V, but if we're making the N as a subject of the formula, so N will be equal to CV. So we'll say CV, the CV of the concentrated is equal to the CV of the diluted. Even though the volumes are not going to be the same, the concentration of both solutions are not going to be the same, but the number of moles of the solution will be equivalent. So we can simply say, and there's a formula that says C1 is equal to V1. C1, C1 times V1 is equal to, um, is equal to C2 um, times V2. So this formula, it's a formula that you use to calculate um, the dilution. Um, when let's say you had the initial concentration and the volume of the concentrated, but now you added water. Now what will be the new solution? So this volume will be the new volume of the solution and the new concentration of the solution. Now when a solution with a certain concentration is diluted, with an addition of water to a new concentration. Now, it, this simply means that um, the, the initial solution, well, let's say it's a standard solution, with a certain solution is diluted with an addition of water to a new concentration. So this simply means that um, in the initial solution that you had, when you add water, that means the concentration changes. It becomes the new solution like this. Let's say we have this initial solution. This initial solution, let's say, it's this much. Um, this is the solution that has the number of moles there. So this solution will say it's solution one. This solution one, it contains the volume. Um, so we'll say it's a V1. And this solution, it contains the concentration. We'll say it's C1. So this is concentration one. Now we take this concentrate, this solution, we transfer it. We transfer it into a another beaker. 
So when you transfer this into another beaker, it will be that um, with, with same number of moles. Do you see those particles there? They represent the number of moles, right? So what I do now, I add water here. So if I add water in this solution, the water will be that amount. And um, this is water. Let's say this is water. I don't mean by writing water on top, drawing water on top, water will sit on top. No, look at this now. Now, there's a new volume. There will be a new volume. This is solution two. Solution two. There will be a new volume here. Now, remember, from this formula that says C is equal to N over V, what I've done here, I've increased the volume of water. In this, I added water. Or I increase the volume of the solution. What's going to happen to the concentration? It will decrease while the number of moles remains what? Constant. So, the number of moles... Um, this simply means that, okay, before that, this, this simply means that there will be a new concentration, that will be C2. But now, what is the commonality between the two solution? Because the number of moles in this solution is the same number of moles in this solution. So we'll say the number of moles in solution 1 is equivalent to the number of moles in solution 2. Remember, solution 1 is a concentrated solution, concentrated solution, right? It's not diluted yet. But solution 2 we'll say it's what? It's diluted. It is diluted. But the number of moles of them, they are equivalent. Now, if we say the number of moles are equivalent, that means that from this formula, we can say, if we make the number of moles as a subset of the formula there, we'll say N, we'll have N is equal to CV. So that means the number of moles of the what? This is the concentrated, equal to the number of moles of what? Of the diluted. Remember, in the diluted and concentrated, what is different there? It's volumes and concentration. Volumes and concentration are different, but the number of moles are equivalent. Remember, the number of moles are the number of particles that are there. The number of the, oh, it's an amount of substance. So we can say here C, um, CV, the number of moles, when we change it to um, a subject of the formula, it will be CV. So we'll say C1, V1. And then equal to C2, V2. Now, this is the formula where you use to calculate. I'm um, calculating what? We know the initial concentration and the initial volume. And when we want to know what will be the new concentration now after we added water in the first concentration. And also, while we know how much, um, what will be the volume of that, we can calculate that. Or vice versa. Um, let's say we are not given the initial concentration and you are given the initial volume and you are told um, what concentration it will be and what volume it will be. But now what you need to know is the initial concentration you're given the final concentration. We'll do the problem. Let's look at the, the examples of calculation of that. Let's look at the example. This is 12, question 12. It says 10.6 of anhydrous um, sodium carbonate. That means this one. It's a dry um, or no water in this crystal. Um, 10.6 anhydrous sodium carbonate is dissolved in a sufficient of water to make the final volume of what? Of 200. So this is a standard solution that is made here. A standard solution is a solution in which the concentration is accurately known. Now, we are given the mass here and we are given the volume. And this is the volume. Now it says calculated the concentration of the solution. So there are two formulas that you can use. We can use this one. Concentration is equal to mass over molar mass multiplied by volume. Now we want the concentration R mass is 10.6 and divide by the molar mass. And the molar mass of sodium carbonate, if we can do it here on the side, molar mass of sodium carbonate, it's going to be um, the mass of sodium is 23, but there are two sodiums. Um, and plus 12 of carbon plus 16 times 3 of, of, of oxygen. So the molar mass there, it's going to be, the molar mass of sodium carbonate is going to be 106 gram per mole. So we substituted the molar mass, which is 106. We multiply by the volume. The volume here is what is 200 cubic centimeter. We have to divide by 1000. So it's going to be 0 0.2. So we multiply by 0 0.2 there. So if we punch that in the calculator, the answer there, it will be 0 0.5 mole per cubic decimeter. That's the concentration of the solution, which is the standard solution that was prepared. Let's look at, um, this was 12.1. Let's look at 12.2. It says, calculate um, the concentration of sodium ion. So when this sodium carbonate, it was dissolved in water, 
um, um, this is what happened. When this sodium carbonate was dissolved in water, when it was diluted, um, it dissociates. So there will be a sodium ion, but two of them. And there will be a carbonate there. There will be a carbonate there. So they want um, the, the concentration of the sodium ion, but we have the concentration of this. It's 0 0.5 mole per dm3. But now, in order to get the concentration of this, we do what we call, it's a molar ratio, not mole ratio, a molar ratio or the concentration ratio. So we'll use this 0 0.5 um, and get the concentration of that. So we'll say the concentration of sodium carbonate is to a concentration, the square brackets means concentration, guys, into a sodium ion. So the ratio between them is what is 1 is to 2. So we're looking for a... Uh, sodium ion will put an X there and then here we have 0 0.5 which is the concentration of sodium um, Carbonate we cross multiply so it will be X the X is what is a concentration of sodium ion So it will be what one mole per dm3. So we've got the answer there. The answer is one Remember guys um, the sodium carbonate when it's dissolved in water it dissociate into that it splits in other words into that now Let's look at 12.3 12.3 it says how much water should be added to 50 so if it's added to 50 so that means it's the initial volume of the concentration that was there um, to reduce the concentration into into this now what do we need to remember now in this we already have the concentration of that this is what we calculated this is the initial concentration but now we are told that the volume is what is 50 so the initial concentration is 0 0.5 so what are we going to do now this solution this is the initial solution we have the initial concentration is what is 0 0.5 mole per dm3 and the volume that is added to that is diluted is what is 50 so now we are asked um, how much um, volume, which is the second solution, the, how much the, the volume of water must be added to reduce it. Remember, when we add water, we are reducing the concentration. So we're reducing the concentration into 0 0.125. So the concentration of the second solution is 0 0.125 mole per dm3. So we'll use that formula that says C1, um, C1, V1 equal to C2, V2. And then the initial concentration is 0 0.5 and the volume of water, the volume of the concentration, it was 50. Uh, remember, guys, when we use this formula, this dilution formula, we don't have to convert the volume into cubic decimeter. We don't have to we use it as it is. And now we are told that the concentration is reduced to 0 0.2, 0 0.125. So we have 0 0.125 there. We are looking at the volume, how much volume must be added in this solution so that the concentration can be reduced to this. So we wanted that volume there. And then we'll do the math. We'll divide by... 0 0.125 for both sides and then our v2 which is the volume that must be added there it will be the answer that we get there is what is 200 cubic uh, centimeter so this is the final volume you had this volume this initial volume of the solution and then you add water and then it will become what 200 but we want to know how much was added from this 50 to make 200 in this reduced concentration so the volume of water this that was not this is not the final answer the volume of water you will say um the final volume minus the initial volume so the final volume is what is 200 cubic centimeter we minus what the initial volume it was 50 50 cubic centimeter so the water that must be added there is 150 to this reduced volume another example here it says 2.52 gram of oxalic acid um, which we are given the compound of the oxalic acid there it was dissolved in water and the water was added until the volume the total volume was 250 so we must convert to that volume so what we will do we'll divide by 1000 so it's going to be 0 0.25 dm3 right so guys um, this statement it's a standard solution again that is prepared here now it says in 13.1 it says calculate the concentration of the oxalic acid solution in mole per dm3 that's why we converted that volume um, in, in dm3 so 13.1 the first thing that we have to do we have to calculate the molar mass 
of the oxalic acid. So the molar mass here, it's going to be, um, it's okay, I'll show you now. Um, the molar mass here, so everything which is the, which is the carboxyl group of that one, so it's two of each of everything that is inside of this bracket. This two, it means two of each, two of everything that is inside the bracket. So it's going to be two. Um, we have uh, carbon there, plus uh, two oxygen, which is 16 times two, plus one for hydrogen, but there are two hydrogens there. Um, so, um, okay, the hydrogen, it's supposed to be one, because the two is outside. Um, and then when we go to this water molecule, this one, guys, it's a hydrated carboxylic acid. It's in an aqueous state. So when we go to this water molecule, we'll say plus. How many more water molecules? There are two of them. And then water is hydrogen and water. It's one. And But how many are they? Times two. Plus um, the oxygen, which is 16. So when you punch that in the calculator, you will find that the molar mass that is 126 gram per mole. Right? Now, let's go to the key question. Now, it says calculate the molar mass. So, calculating the molar mass here, we use the formula mass over molar mass multiplied by volume. Why are we using this? Because we're given the mass there and we're given the volume and the molar mass, the one that this is the easiest. So, we'll say 2,52 divided by the molar mass is 126 multiplied by the volume. So, our volume here is 0, 0,25. So, when you punch that in the calculator, you get 0, 0,08 more per dm3 as they told us from the beginning that they want in the dm3 let's look at the 13.2 13.2 it says what volume of the solution of oxalic acid should be made up with two with water to give 250 so to give when they tell us to give 250 that means that this one this would be a second solution when it's diluted so this volume it's a secondary volume right now what when they say what volume so they wanted the initial volume what is the initial volume this will be v1 right and this um, this secondary solution has the volume of 250 with a concentration of what of 0 0.2 so this will be c2 right and the initial concentration we do have, let's write our data. We have the initial concentration, the one we just calculated at 0 0.08 mole per dm3. And then the initial volume is the one that is required. And then the secondary concentration here, it's 0 0.05 mole, which is the diluted one. If you can see there, the water is added and then the concentration will decrease. So the initial concentration was this. Now the concentration will decrease to that. And then the volume the volume the secondary volume it will be what 250 cm3 remember when you're going to use the dilution equation the one that says c1 v1 is equal to c2 v2 you do not have to change the units let me rewrite it again it's c2 v2 you do not have to change the units of the volume there so my initial concentration there it's 0 0.08 multiply by the initial volume is the one that is needed you don't have to put it in bracket the secondary concentration at 0 0.05 and then secondary volume of the sec of the diluted one is what is 250 so i can just put it as 250 there and then we do the math there we'll divide by 0 0.08 both sides 0 0.08 both sides so the initial volume um, that needs to be diluted here yeah? it's going to be 156 cubic centimeter because the volume here it's what it's in cubic centimeter so the volume that you will get it will be cubic centimeter as well right